Stacey with the gamer here. Hi. Um, I wanted to ask a little bit about the the armor and the helmet because that's such an iconic part of Master Chief. But obviously, you don't wear it all that much in the show. Does that oh, give that's you more not freedom? Fair. I wear it a lot. <laughs> well, I just want to know what you take it off. Obviously, does that give you the yeah. freedom to inject yourself into the character, or does it bring some kind of pressure that you know you're not what the hardcore fans are have been playing for twenty years? Um, no, I don't, I don't think that's a fair assessment. Uh, I, I think it's not injecting my character. I think I'm the, the actor who's been asked to play the character. And, uh, so the armor is obviously the iconic parts of Chief that we all know, um, from the video game. But let's be honest, the, the video game is a first person shooter video game where you're asked to play as the Chief himself. And that's why the character has been kept as kind of a symbol and, and very vague and, and, the uh, the, there's not a lot of character development with him. Uh, he is, he is for us, he represents bravery and courage. Um, but all the subtleties and nuance of who he is as a human, we fill in the details ourselves as gamers. Uh, making a television show is a very, very different medium. And when you make a television show, it's, it's no longer a first-person shooter video game. You now uh, are being asked as a, a player to put the controller down, to uh, sit back on the couch and enjoy a universe that you have you know, come to know and love for so long, but to experience it in a very different way. And the process of uh, John discovering who he is as a human being over the course of the first season is a similar process to us as audience members, learning who the chief is, all of those uh, elements of his persona that we've filled in with our own personal details for so long, we're now filling in in television storytelling format. Um, and if, if you can get on board and enjoy the experience of that, uh, then I think for, for um, you know, avid Halo fans, it's going to be a very, very rewarding experience to get to take that journey in a different way. Um, and for, you know, new people who have never experienced the Halo universe before, uh, it's an opportunity to be exposed to this incredibly rich and well thought out universe that we've all uh, come to love over the past 20 years. So I'm very excited for both groups of people. Stacey, our next question goes to Jamie with Sci-Fi Vision. Hi, Jamie, Sci-Fi Vision. This is actually continuing on that. Um, what I'd like to know- Jamie, is, what is planet are you on? <laughs> I'm not sure. Okay. <laughs> but uh, the costume does not look comfortable. Yeah. But how much does kind of wearing that inform the decisions you make and the way you move and things like that? Um, I don't think the, the discomfort of it informs it. Um, it you know, the, the fact that it, it's hard to manipulate and makes you a little immobile informs what we're able to achieve. Uh, and mostly it informs uh, how we are now have to attack shooting it, right? Uh, there's certain elements that are going to have to be v VFX because they're just not capable in the suit. You know, one particular thing I'm thinking of is, you know, from the video games, I always love the moment where, uh, where Chief is running into battle. He reaches behind his back, pulls out the assault rifle, and continues into battle and starts shooting at folks. Um, that's something that, because I can't get my hand above my shoulder, just simply can't happen in real life. Not to mention that none of the weapons actually work, and it's not actually future tech. So there's certain things that have to uh, obviously be movie magic and be augmented by uh, visual effects, and the suit does affect some of that. Thank you so much. Of course. Thanks, Jamie. Next question goes to Donovan with Shack News. Yep, I'm Donovan with Shack News. Uh, we know that uh, Chief was very traditionally very stoic, man of few words. Uh, so as an actor, what was it like getting to dive into that character's motivations, his emotions, uh, the stuff that drives him, all the things that we kind of rarely explore in the games? Yeah, I mean, I think Chief was developed that way and, and remained that way for so long so that we could feel like we are him as we play the game. Um, you, you don't want to have too, too um, much of a developed character or, or it will make people feel like uh, they're not him. Uh, so, you know, the process of, of the first season is really the process of discovery for John, where he begins to have access to his emotional life and some personal memories that he didn't have access to before. And the question of who is the Master Chief uh, is really uh, spooled out over the course of the first season, 
and it's it's done in concert with uh, John really discovering who he is himself. Um, and it's an opportunity for us uh, as an audience member to learn things about the chief that we didn't know before or that we had always filled in with our own personal details. All right, thanks. Our next question goes to Gary with Comic-Con. Hi, Gary with Comic-Con.com. Um, you touched upon how it's a journey of self-discovery for Master Chief. Um, when he's introduced to Quan, there's kind of like a humanizing effect that she has to him. Could you describe, like, how would you describe their relationship and her importance to his personal journey? Um, you know, there's people that you meet at certain points in your life that, that just come, that are in the right place at the right time, right? And I think that's definitely a situation of Quan and, and the chief. He happens to come across her. Um, I mean, the first time you see him in interaction with her, uh, it's, it's a nothing moment. You know, she's a civilian who survived a, a massive attack. She's the lone survivor. He thinks nothing of it and walks away from her. Uh, then he has this experience with an artifact um, that was left behind uh, by the Covenant who was trying to retrieve it. Uh, and this, this artifact uh, brings up some childhood memories for him. And it is the contact with that artifact uh, and the memories that it unlocks in him that creates a different relationship between him and Quan. And she just happens to be there at the right time. Uh, and this moral dilemma of doing what's right versus doing what's expected uh, begins to surface in him for the first time ever. Um, and it's all created by that uh, first contact with the artifact. Thank you. Gary? Next question goes to Gig with LRM Online. Gig with LRM Online. Pablo, one of the things that uh, I love about Halo for the past 20 years is that I have no idea what uh, Master Chief actually looked like. I always imagine he looks like me or someone else and so on. But now you are the face of Master Chief. So could you talk about how that mystique has now been set aside and you are now the face of it and that possibly in the future video game franchises, you will continue to be the face. And every time I play the video game, now I see you. Um, I haven't heard anything about that. And uh, I, don't, I don't know that that's a necessary leap to make. Um, but I will say that we're creating entertainment, uh, you know, specific to the medium that it's being made for. Uh, Halo is a first person shooter video game and you're meant to feel like you are the chief. So the character development was specific for that purpose. He was always kept vague so that, as you say, you could feel like you're him. I could feel like I'm him when I play. Um, you know, and this is uh, uh, being made specifically for a long form television story. and really the only way to do that and to connect with a character, to empathize with a character over the course of a long form series is to get to know the character and to feel, uh, to know how they feel about things over the course of time, to continually be confronted with how they feel about certain objects. That's how we empathize with, with characters. Uh, and without being able to do that, without having access to the face, there is no long-term development. The long-term development that you talk about as a Halo fan is because you put your personality in there. So that mystique that you're talking about, which was critical for the games, um, becomes um, a challenge when you're making a TV show. And so it was incredibly important from the very beginning to get the helmet off, to show the face and get the audience comfortable with the fact that we're going to see the face and we're going to um, follow this character in a way so that you can empathize with him, you can be drawn along by the process. And the setup of the first season, again, is the, is the process of John learning who he is as a human being. And in that process, we're all going to learn who the Master Chief is for this particular story that we're telling. This story that we're telling doesn't devalue anybody else's Master Chief. Your Master Chief is still yours, and it's still totally relevant. 
Uh, my Master Chief that I imagined when I played is still totally relevant, and it's different from the Master Chief that I'm creating as an actor. Steve Downs' version of the Master Chief that is so iconic and so beloved by so many, including me, I'm a huge fan of Steve and what he was able to accomplish over the course of the last 20 years, it doesn't take away anything from that performance either. If anything, we're adding to the Halo universe by fleshing out the character of the Master Chief in a way that you were never able to do in the games because of the construct of the medium. We now have a new opportunity and a new medium to explore a very familiar universe that we all love so much in a new and exciting way. And if you're willing to come along for that journey, if you're willing to put the controller down, sit back on the couch, and experience the Chief's journey in, in a new way that will feel familiar and will feel like a Halo universe, then I think it's going to be a really uh, deeply rich and rewarding experience for Halo fans, uh, but also for new people who have never played Halo and never experienced the universe. And that's one of my huge excitements as well is bringing this universe that I've fallen in love with deeply over the past three years in researching it and learning about the lore and the Halo mythology, bringing this universe to a whole new set of eyes and showing them why we love it so much. You know, that's, that's really what we have the opportunity to do here and what I'm so excited about. And um, that process starts on March 24th, and I really hope everyone can get on board with it and enjoy it. And if not, that's okay too. You know, if you have an opinion that differs from mine, we respect it. There's, there's as many opinions in the Halo universe as there are Halo fans. So it's, it's all good and we respect you and, and we look forward to, uh, to you enjoying the show. Well said, thank you. Thank you.